Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. Today is stage two, the Walta a Catalonia. It's an individual time trial stage today, and yesterday's stage has what could have been a massive effect on today's stage. Now, we talked about yesterday. Kamna comes down to the line. He's probably the best climber out of that group of four. They play a little cat and mouse. Kamna's not sure if he wants to give up the stage win and continue to gain time on the GC favorites. He hesitates. He gives up some time. He rides at the front, hesitates some more, gives up some time. In the end, they win the stage by about 16 seconds when they had over 30 seconds to begin with. Now, we'll take Luis Leon Sanchez because Luis Leon Sanchez had no plans to do any work on yesterday's stage one at the finish with 1.5K to go. He's clearly going to sit on Kamna and make him do all the work. Luis Leon Sanchez finishes today's stage, does a decent ride on the time trial, loses the leader's jersey by just three seconds. So yesterday he tried for the stage win. Today he loses the leader's jersey by three seconds. When we're talking on the butterfly effect yesterday, what I was explaining about those hesitations, those game playings, everything rolls forward at some point in time when you're a rider like Luis Leon Sanchez and of course Camda. Camda, maybe, maybe not. He keeps the jersey today. Of course, he's going to lose it to Luis Leon Sanchez, but maybe he could gain it in one of the mountain stages coming up. Maybe the kid gets dropped. We don't know. For sure, he's young. He can climb. But does he have his best form here at Walta Catalonia? That we're not sure. Could be without any games, though. He's sitting second on GC right now, third or fourth at worst. Instead, the guys from the break, they're not in the leader's jersey today, and they're sitting third and tenth thereabouts on the general classification. Now, I, don't, I want to talk a little bit more, too, because... Yesterday's stage had another factor. I'm on my trainer today, watching today's stage, riding an hour and a half, doing 225 watts on the trainer. Rowan Dennis wins the stage. Now, when I get on the bike, he's the race leader, of course, because he went off early. Didn't think about it. I just figured he finished, you know, 70th, 80th on the stage yesterday. <clears throat> the whole time when I'm riding my bike, I'm assuming he's race leader. I did not even think about it because I saw him pulling yesterday with four kilometers to go on the front of the group. So when I'm on the trainer, you know, if I was really professional, I would have looked through past the top 80 and seen the, any, if, if any of the favorites have gotten dropped. Because Rowan Dennis clearly had gotten dropped, finished 83rd yesterday, lost over two minutes. But because I'd watched the stage and seen him on the front with 4K to go, when I'm on the trainer today watching the individual TT, I'm thinking for sure he's race leader. I'm thinking Team Enos are in a golden position with Rowan Dennis, who we all know from the Giro last year has spectacular legs in the mountains when he wants to. He doesn't always want to. This is the problem when you have a rider like Rowan Dennis. He's a character that's going to do whatever it is that's going on in his head at that particular moment. Okay. Maybe yesterday he crashed, maybe he flatted, maybe something happened that I didn't catch, that the cameras didn't catch, that they didn't talk about when I was watching today's stage. I watched most of the individual time trial, two hours of it, and I never heard the commentator talk about him crashing or having a flat or anything like that. So the whole time I'm still thinking, ah, he's race leader, right? Wasn't until the last rider Crone goes and he's almost across the finish line that I hear that it is not Rowan Dennis that is the race leader. It's actually Almeida. So this changes all of the strategy as we go forward now. Okay, Rowan Dennis is a difficult rider to have on the team in terms of staff, in terms of management, in terms of sponsors, in terms of even his own riders on the team. He's going to be a difficult character because you never know what he's going to do for the team. You know he's a spectacular rider. I'm not debating that. He's an incredible rider. World time trial champion. He's won tons of TTs. Clearly won the Giro last year for Teo Gegenhardt. Without Rowan Dennis there, Teo Gegenhardt does not win the Giro. Okay, That is not even up for dispute in my book. Rowan Dennis won the Giro for Ineos last year. Okay, But... 
Now we fast forward to yesterday's stage. At 4K, he's still on the front pulling. There's no way I've done this course many times. There's no way you're getting dropped at 4K on that wide boulevard that goes down the coast. So he had to sit up. Now somebody can look on his Twitter feed or maybe he's got some other kind of social media out there. Maybe he crashed, maybe something happened, but I don't think so. I think he's got it. He must have just sat up. I watched the end of yesterday's stage today after the time trial just to make sure. And I'm pretty certain I still see him there with 3K to go at the very back when they're coming out of the turn, arriving onto the Big Coast Boulevard there. Can't guarantee it, but I'm pretty certain it's him back there. So he must have just sat up for whatever reason and just did not care about what was going to happen on that stage at the finish while his teammates were on the front. So he's dropping off the back, his teammates are on the front. Some of you guys might argue like, oh, Chris, he gave 100% and that was all he had and he swung off. There's no way a rider of this quality does a short pull like, like he did at yesterday's stage and then all of a sudden can't swing on to a back of to the back group of 80 riders and ride down the coast to the finish line. And now remember, if he's wearing the race leader's jersey today, not only does he get to win the stage and have the jersey, which is something nice, you can hang it up on your wall, keep it there forever, but it changes all the tactics going forward. Would have forced Joel Ameda to have to attack. It allows Richie Port, Carapaz, G. Thomas to sit on, get a free ride. Now, Richie Port at six, seven seconds back, whatever it happens to be. G. Thomas is, is a little bit further back from there and Richard Carapaz a little bit further. Now those three riders have to attack before they just got a free ride. Rowan Dennis might even have legs that could have won him at Catalonia here, but we won't get into that debate. But certainly when they start the last climb, if he's in the front, the other Ineos guys just have to cover moves, sit on it because they already have the race leader, and then jump the guy before the finish and gain 5, 10, 20 seconds and get the leader's jersey back. So keep that in mind when you're watching these stages coming forward on how much that might have affected his teammates if he had just ridden three and a half more K with the group yesterday and be wearing the race leader's jersey today. It's an interesting take here on the butterfly effect, and that's what you're here for. I'm just here to point out something. Maybe he crashed, but I don't think so, guys. I think he just sat up. It was just in the head. He's a character writer like that where we've seen it at the 2019 Tour de France where he drops out right before the time trial stage. It makes it incredibly difficult on the team because you lose a rider at the Tour de France that can help maybe win stages, maybe could win the time trial that day. It's hard on the sponsors, of course, because now it's big time media. So when you're talking about a rider like Roan Dennis, if I was the manager or rider, I'm not certain if I would want him on my team. As a commentator here, especially as an uh, analysis right here, on the butterfly effect, I love the guy. Bring him on. I mean, he's going to mix up everything. We never know what we're going to get from a rider like Rowan Dennis. He gets a spectacular win today, but he dropped out yesterday. So it's kind of crazy, right? So for me personally, I love the guy. Hope someone always gives him a job. He's a fantastic rider and stuff. But can you see it as a sponsor point of view when you look at the 2019 Tour de France and he drops out there? and you're the Meridia bike sponsor, and there's equipment problems. They won't say exactly if it's a bike sponsor or equipment or if it's wheels or tires or who knows, maybe it's the clothing, but everyone assumes it's the bike, right? So if you're Meridia, would you really like to have a rider like this on your team, even if he can win you the Giro, but then drop out of the Tour de France? It's kind of crazy, right? Well, we're on the butterfly effect, so that's what it's about. Tomorrow's stage, Almeida is in the lead. This kid is fantastic. We seen him at the Giro last year. He rides hard. He's strong. He can climb. We saw him time trial today. Fabulous rider. You know you're going to see him suffering 100% to try to keep this jersey. De Kunic quick step can control it along the flats. He won't have massive help in the climbs, but the kid can climb and he's got a little bit of a few second lead. So we'll see if he can keep this jersey through Volta Catalonia or if it's going to be the Ineos riders tag teaming them back there left and right to try to steal that jersey away. Hope you like today's take on the butterfly effect. The individual time trial left some drama, leaves, leaves us some good conversation for what's coming up in the following stages. Like and subscribe and I'll see you guys real soon.